<laughs> oh, listen to that howl. <laughs> A few weeks ago, we filmed what was our favourite video so far this year. It was Richard Hammond in the Drive Tribe M5 against a pro golfer, and I'm not joking, within a minute of driving it, he broke it. From that one day of filming, we ended up with three warning lights. I can show two of them to you now if I start up the car. So, we've got one saying tire puncture, there's the first prong. Then we have another one saying restraint systems. So the tire puncture one is because we put bigger Bridgestone tires on it and the computer doesn't like the pressures that they're at. So we just need to recalibrate that. The restraint systems, that's because I imagine Richard had to move the seat and has just pringed either a switch or a fuse underneath the seat that's connected to the airbag system. So again, not that big an issue. Then there was the big one. Richard came in, literally, after one lap of the Aintree F1 track. Do not want to have to tell Mike I've broken his baby, but... Looking a bit sheepish and said, Mike, I've got an engine warning light. Now, in a V10 BMW, an engine warning light could mean end of story. What had happened was the car had just got a wee bit hot. I think it had got to about 105, 110 degrees. It shows that the cooling system in this car could do with a bit of an overhaul. So we're here at Everything M in Banbury to get it sorted. So Dara, the car got a little bit hot. It didn't overheat, mm -hmm. it just crept up a bit. Yep. Um, what do you reckon caused that? Uh, original kit probably on the car. You normally find there's a lot of crud, you know, in between the radiators. Uh, might find that some of the aluminium's corroded and the fins aren't working as they should. Okay. So, um, old stuff, hot car, it's best to refresh. I mean, it was a pretty serious test. Like, basically a full track day, 8,000 RPM in 33 degrees. Like, that's pretty it's gonna big do it. test for a 2007 car. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so this is basically everything fresh to go on the car yep. within the cooling system. So, yep. radiator, I can't get over how big this is. Yes, <laughs> yes. Engine oil, oil cooler. cooler. Yep. Aircon. Aircon. And then water pump thermostat. Yes. Cool, and then we've got the little silly thing. So the airbag light and the the tire puncture warning. What's yeah. the situation with those? Airbag light is gonna be the seat belt pre-tensioners. Okay. Um, German so that's order. Ping, does it? That's yes. just yeah. Yeah. Um, so we've ordered some new ones. They're coming from Germany. They're gonna okay. take five to ten days, unfortunately. Okay, now. so we'll get to that down the line. Exactly. Uh, and tire pressure monitor will we'll just reset the system. Cool. Perfect. Well my favorite subject in engineering was thermodynamics. So mm. I like cooling and heating stuff. So yep. yeah, looking forward to it. So Dara, what is the process of us getting all of this cooling system out? Okay, so to access this area here, which is your engine coolant, your AC, and then down at the bottom is gonna be your oil cooler. Okay. We're gonna take the slam panel off, but while we're doing that, what we'll do is draw all the gas out. So you have your aircon, high pressure and low pressure sides okay. um, available here. So we've got the aircon machine there, which we will um, plug on, draw the gas out, and then we'll get the slam panel off, take the fan pack out, and get all the coolant out, the engine coolant radiator. While the guys are sorting out all the nasty little electronic bits, I've got another mission to go on. As you can see, the back of the Dodge is full of M5 wheels. Richard has caused all of those issues, and Ben Collins, when he drove the car, accidentally went slightly off-roading 
and bent one of the wheels. When we were getting the new Bridgestones put on them, actually it turned out that three out of the four wheels on the car were kind of squared off on one side. So let's get these refurbed and make them a bit rounder. Just down the road are the legends at SGM, who are absolute ninjas at repairing wheels. With the tyres off, their special rig measured the wheels to find the buckled sections. Then, using heat and a precise hydraulic press, each wheel was massaged back into shape. Back at Everything M, Dara set about removing the thermostat and water pump, the final bits of original cooling system to come out. We love making workshop content like this, and it's especially cool when you're staring at a V10 engine most of the day, but we wouldn't be able to make content like this if it weren't for you guys and girls watching our videos, as well as sponsors supporting the channel. And today's video is sponsored by Car Vertical. Car Vertical compiles data from all over the world and puts it into one nice, neat, comprehensive report that covers a car's history. So it will tell you whether the car has ever been in an accident, if it's ever been stolen, if it has outstanding finance, or whether there's something a wee bit weird going on with the mileage. Let's say, off the back of watching our Isle of Man content, you fancy an M5, but the naturally aspirated E60 seems a bit too scary, so you go up a generation to the F10, and you come across this one. Now, if you go to the photos section of the car vertical report, the car looks okay. It was at a recent auction, and apart from needing a bit of a clean, doesn't seem to need anything too drastic. But then you scroll down to 2020 and this car looks like it's been in a serious crash. The front bumper has been completely ripped off. The rear of the car looks absolutely destroyed. This M5 looks like it's been in a serious spin on the road and has hit numerous very hard things before coming to a halt. Elsewhere on the report, everything checks out. It has green ticks in the theft, finance and mileage section, so they're all good. And you can even dive deeper into the data and see that the car's had two license plate changes in its life and it once got an advisory in an MOT for having a nail in the offside rear tire back in 2018. All good stuff to know. Car Vertical is a great tool for making sure you don't buy a car with a dodgy history. So if you're in the market for something secondhand, use our exclusive link in the description below to get 10% off when using Car Vertical. And by clicking that link, you'll also help support us making videos like this. Dara, that's everything out of the car now. What can you diagnose from what we can see here? Um, well, I mean, if you look at the other side of the radiator here, if we just flip her over there, yeah. you can sort of see it's, it's oh. full of Full of loads of crud. A bit waspy up the yeah. top. Yeah. Loads of the, the core inside here has, has just sort of just degraded and, and you know it's it's sort of corroded. So it's not only is it is it sort of blocking air going through, but it also doesn't have the same sort of thermal efficiency as, as what the fresh radiator would have. Okay, cool. And then the oil cooler down there? Oil cooler, that's sort of, you know, not terribly bad. It's a bit scabby. Yeah. But um, the you fins know. don't look as crushed as the ones on the other side of here. No, absolutely. No, it's pretty good. It's, it's all right, but certainly helps to have a fresh, nice, fresh cooler on there. That's for sure. Yep, Enzo agrees. What about, so we've got thermostat and water pump here. Yep, so thermostat, you know, the, um, all of the rubber seal around this is just, it's yeah. just, it's turned into like hard plastic. It's, it's really not, not very nice. Lots of it's broken away. It, it doesn't feel great either. Yeah, it's, it's old. It's definitely the original from okay. the car. Um, Again, um, Enzo's, he absolutely hates that. Doesn't like it. Another point is, is the, um, the water pump here. It is fairly uh, worn. You can see it's actually worn into the, uh, the, yes. the housing. So all around this area is, um, is actually quite worn. So it means it, it may not have been sealing quite so well. Okay. Um, you know, everything kind of has a knock-on effect from the thermostat to the radiator to potentially the water pump not doing its job at 100% efficiency. So. Okay, so a 33 degree day, it all kind of makes sense that exactly. the car got that hot. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So tomorrow is going to be all about refreshing this. Yep. Is it as simple as the reverse of what we've just done? Yeah, very much so. Um, we'll, we'll fit the, the oil cooler in first. We'll then get the air conditioning condenser in. 
the new engine coolant radiator in. We'll bleed it all up and yeah, put the new water pump and thermostat in and that'll be back up to 100% efficiency. Cool, see you in the morning. Yep, yeah, see you then. Good morning, welcome to day two. Enzo's found a stick for breakfast and today is gonna to be all about rebuilding the M5. Is that yummy? Oh yeah. Just before we start the rebuilding of the car, we have noticed one more corroded cooler, haven't we? What, what's this one here? Uh, this is the power steering cooler. Okay. It's definitely seen better days. Yes, so we weren't going to replace this one, but now that we've seen it, yeah, she's a bit scabby. Yeah, so she will be a bit, little bit leaky. Oh God. Um, so. I mean, this, if I just keep pulling on that. Yeah, yeah I mean, that is not good. That's not what a heat exchanger should look like. <laughs> but that's just classic, 15 years of wear and tear, essentially. Yeah, it's at the front of the stack as well, so it's just getting pummeled by road dirt, um, salt, debris, whatever, so yeah. Okay, so we replace this first and then everything else follows. Exactly that, yeah. Cool. <laughs> so Dara, is that everything back in place? Um, yep, so all the radiators are in, coolant okay. pipes are on, uh, we've put the rad fan pack in, inlets are on. And we've got oil coolant and power steering fluid kind of ready to go. Exactly, yeah. Okay. So what's next? Uh, runner up, make sure the power steering doesn't run dry, so we'll have someone ready just to top oh, that up as, yep. as, as that's running. Make we'll sure the- start gargling. Exactly, yeah, yeah, keep an eye on that to just before it gets warm and make sure that's at the right level. Uh, we'll also run the AC, make sure that's nice and icy cold. Um, once we're happy, we'll button everything up and send it down the road. Cool, I'll start her up. Cool. With the liquidy bits done and dusted, Dara plugged the car in to sort out something that has been bothering him since the manual swap, the ability to switch off traction control. When we first installed the manual, the car lost the button needed to put the car in its middle ground MDM mode as well as full DSC off nutter mode. After a bit of coding, Dara cracked it. Right, so... Turn on the engine? Yep. Yeah. So, we'll go into the iDrive system. Yep. We're gonna to go to M Drive. So that is once I press my M button. Yes, right? indeed, yeah. We're gonna run however you wanna run EDC. So comfort, I find, on the road is better. Yeah, UK roads especially. UK, <laughs> yeah. Um, DSC, we're running as M Dynamic mode. So okay. if you press the M mode on the steering wheel, you now have an MDM light up Cool. On the dash. So that is like sort of semi traction control, right? Yeah, it's like M track mode. It allows a little bit more slip. Um, and then we'll go to off, and you'll have your warning triangle with the circle. <laughs> that is. Cycle mode. Yeah, that's stick <laughs> mode. Yeah, okay. So that's, that's DSC fully off. 
Okay. Uh, burnouts, donuts, whatever <laughs> you wish. So that means that if anyone brings their car here to get the manual treatment, like what we've had, yeah. you can do this programming exactly. and they'll have the full functionality. Exactly. Cool. So having switched on the car, I've still got the airbag light, but you've figured out it's probably a seat belt. Yep, seat belt retentioner. So swap that out okay. and that'll get rid of your airbag light. But that's apart from Germany, so we'll get to that down the line. Absolutely. Before we finish though, let's just put you back onto M dynamic mode. Let's do that. Keep okay. you out of the ditch. Well, actually, wait a minute. P400, can't Ooh. be having that. No, P500 that's Sport. Good. Oh yeah, there she is. There you go. Full cycle. <laughs> Cheers, Dara. No problem. After Richard pushing this car to its absolute limit around the Aintree F1 circuit, it should now be running absolutely spot on, nice and cool. We have got a couple of things in the diary for this car going forward, including a very special trip to its homeland. We're taking this car back to Germany very soon, so you'll see that content on the channel in the next few weeks. Yet again, a massive thank you to Dara and the guys at Everything M for sorting our M5. If you like this video, Give it a thumbs up. I've been Mike, and don't forget to subscribe to Drive Tribe. Shine your light, cast away the shadows in